Most of us in Australia live on or near to the coast. Two natural processes along the coast that we are familiar with are coastal erosion and inundation from high tides or storm events. Scientists tell us that climate change will increase the frequency and impacts of these two hazards on the coast. Sea levels will rise and together with increased storm events there will be greater inundation and coastal erosion. We have recently seen some of the impacts increased storm activity can have on coastal erosion. Views of impacted clifftop properties in Sydney or in Melbourne and views of Marengo Beach and the Great Ocean Road come to mind. There has been significant work undertaken on likely coastal inundation with modelling of anticipated levels of sea level rise and storm impacts, but less work on coastal erosion impacts. So which areas are likely to be impacted and which assets should we be more concerned about? For coastal erosion, local coastal hazard assessments have been undertaken for some sections of the Victorian coast, but there has been no statewide assessment of likely coastal erosion impacts. An alternative broad-scale approach that considers the entire coastline termed a second pass assessment is presented here. Using statewide spatial data, this approach considers exposure to the change, sensitivity to these changes, and factors that may help mitigate the potential impacts. Spatial Vision has adopted this approach to identify areas of the coast most likely to be impacted and be highly vulnerable to erosion. Exposure factors may include seaward orientation of the coastline, amount of open water or fetch in front of the coast, and wave climate, including energy and height. Sensitivity of the coast may relate to the geology or structure of the coast and its potential erodibility and sediment processes. Adaptive capacity factors can include engineered structures and intertidal and coastal vegetation. The approach applied by Spatial Vision has modelled the coastline, dividing it up into 50 metre segments, assigning relevant attributes to these segments, and evaluating how assets on or related to the coast may be impacted by the resultant coastal erosion. This is based on elevation above mean sea level, land cover and distance from the coastline. The asset evaluation process involves assigning a profile to each asset on or near to the coast to identify its coastal erosion vulnerability impact and inundation outcomes for different levels of sea level rise and storm events. The coastal erosion and inundation findings of this work can be used to identify areas of greatest impact and hence where to focus future studies and monitoring efforts. For further information into this work, contact Spatial Vision.